I'm almost there. You know me, I'll be fine. I'll be back as soon as I find Chris. Why does everyone think I'm gonna get in trouble? What the? they'll have some answers at the police station. Wait, you're a cop? Yeah, Leon Kennedy. You are? Claire, you're Redfield. Claire! Claire, are you okay? I'm all right. How about you? You can't stay here. It's not safe. Meet you at the station. Hey, what's up, guys? So, this is my video of the Claire second run, Snarrow B, and this is the S plus run. We're just gonna get. <laughs> the S plus Leon, right under the nick I'm of sure time. Me here. While practicing for this run, I did have to make a number of attempts to actually figure out how I was gonna get the most items I can and get in under the two hour mark for this second run. But basically it's gotta hustle and you gotta know your route and you gotta plan accordingly. I mean, that's how I was able to do it. So in my run, I'm able to at least just get it just right, right under the threshold of where you got to be to actually get the S plus achievement. So anyways, just going to run here. And since you're not going to really be using the SLS very much, I just go ahead and see if I can get a crit on that zombie while he's laying down. But we're going to watch this cutscene, and we're going to pick him back. Hold on. I'll be right there. Okay. Claire, it's so nice to see you. How are you doing? That helicopter just came out yeah. of nowhere. I'm in one piece. I'm guessing you don't have a key in one of those fancy pockets? Uh, unfortunately, no. Mm. But how are you doing? You know, just surviving. <sighs> That's good. Yeah. Any luck with your brother? No, not yet. Claire, don't lose hope. I'm sure we're going to find him. Damn it. You know what that means? Yeah. Dinner time. Claire, I think you should go. Don't worry about me, Leon. You take care of yourself. Claire, you need to go. Now. Okay. Let's get through this. Both of us. Okay, so immediately after the cutscene, you got to make a break for it, or you're going to end up getting surrounded by these zombies. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up that red herb that I didn't pick up on my way in. And when we get down to the, the security room, we're going to go ahead and use the bolt cutter to open the chain. And we're just going to loot everything that's in there. We're going to go ahead and put away the SLS code. Like I said earlier, we're not going to be using it very much, at least in the beginning. We will start using it more once we get the frame upgrade that allows us to use the high-powered rounds. So anyways, we're just going to pick up everything here and we're going to exit the room. So we got the six-shooter. don't really like the six-shooter six because it takes an awful long time to, to reload. Sorry. But anyways, I'm going to try... I see an avenue here and I'm going to try and avoid these zombies, which as you can see was a bad idea because I got grabbed. But it's okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue. I'm going to go ahead and enter the police station here. Just like that. Toss the key. Just pick up the rounds. 
and with Claire, I will go get the grenade launcher during this first run in the RPD. So the reason why I tried to avoid those zombies is because I wanted to use this grenade on these zombies right here. So since I was able to use the grenade on those zombies, they're not, they're not going to be following me down the hallway. And I don't have to worry about trying to shoot them to get past them. So in a way, it was kind of a trade-off. Now, I, I would have rather have not gotten grabbed by that zombie and been able to have a, a full heal that I can use. But it's okay. So anyway, it's going to win in there. I grab the key card. I'm going to leave everything else there for now. This zombie, since it was damaged by the grenade, is going to go down in one shot. I'm going to go down. And I'm going to enter the east side of the police station. Okay, so going inside the police station, immediately we're going to take care of this zombie here, put him out. Because we are going to be coming back through this hallway. I use the boards there to board up that window there. Going to enter this room, and there are some items I'm going to go ahead and collect right away. But first, I'm going to go down the hallway, I'm going to pick up the rounds in this press room and in the storage room. Okay, so coming down the hallway, grab these uh, boards and the six shooter rounds, the high caliber round. And I'm gonna run back. That zombie might be walking around, but looks like he's not. Okay, so what am I gonna do is I'm actually gonna go in this room first because what I'm gonna try and do as a strategy for this run is loot as much as I can from this room and while leaving a space open. Because when I actually go to the watchman's room or the break room, there's gonna be a knife on the door I wanna be able to collect. So I usually leave a space open in my inventory because with the second run, I figured out just that you do not have the same inventory space that you do in your normal run. So part of being successful in getting the S plus run is just really managing your inventory and knowing what you got to pick up and knowing what you got to take with you and what you can leave behind. So as you can see there, I went ahead and picked up the knife. So I got a full inventory now on my way back to this watch room over here. And I'm going to unload everything and loot everything here drop everything off including the valve I'm gonna keep the weapons key card on me for for when I go back through the main lobby of the RPD on my way to the west side because I am gonna pick up the grade la grenade launcher first for Claire because in my opinion it's easy for her it's easier on her if you get the grenade launcher right away probably because I feel like the six shooter is not that great a weapon compared to Leon's uh, Colt 45 that he gets for this part. And it really it's because it's a slow reload speed. And one of the things I feel like I don't want to be fumbling with is trying to reload the weapon when you could just use one flame round and take out an annoying zombie that you got to get rid of. So anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and loot everything there and I'm going to run back down this hallway. And pretty much for Clara, this is the last time you're ever going to be coming through this area. So you can just leave uh, Elliot right there in the corner. You're never going to never gonna bother him again. So as you can see, this zombie will go back again. And we're just going to put a couple rounds on him and he's going to go down. So this guy kind of surprised me a little bit. So as you can see here, he did his double lunge. But since I was able to get around him, I'm not going to waste ammo trying to kill him because... Like I said, um, as Claire, you're not gonna you're not gonna visit this section again. So once you get everything here, you can just kiss this place goodbye. So we're gonna use the breaker, use the fuse in the breaker, and open the gate. Now this area, I do like to go ahead and take care of all the zombies in this area, especially Mr. Marvin. I actually got killed by Marvin one time. That totally pissed me off. <laughs> Had to start over after that one. So, anyways. So I'm just going to make sure these guys is dead. Got a crit there, so don't have to so don't have to deal with him anymore. So we're going to go ahead and pick up the first aid spray. We're going to leave the ink ribbon there. I'm less 
much, I'm, a, I'm much less of a stickler on the second run as far as getting items. Some items I just will leave behind I mean, in my first videos on my yeah, first run or the scenario A. I even picked up ink ribbons. That's how anal I am. But for the second run, you have to you have to make some choices about what you're going to leave behind. And since you don't really need to carry around ink ribbons with you that much because you're only going to save three times, you can leave those behind. So anyways, here's Marvin. Since in this scenario, Claire doesn't have the interaction with him, so she's not emotionally tied to him, knows him as a person, so just another zombie to her. By the way, if you've played Resident Evil 3 already, you see what happens to Marvin, how he actually gets infected, but no spoilers here, so anyways. Since there's a liquor down this hallway, we're just going to walk. And in this run, I don't knife liquors like I did in the last run. And since Claire is never going to come down this hallway again, you don't need a board for that open window over there. So you're just going to make your way through here. You're going to walk it. Walk, walk, walk. And once you get to the operations room, you can probably start sprinting into the room. That liquor's not going to catch up to you in time. So we're just going to loot the bullets from here. Grab the map if you need it. Maybe grab the files because you like to read them. Anyways. And we're going to open the chain here. And this is the last time we'll use the bolt cutters. So we can get rid of those. So we're going to pick up the detonator. The I just go ahead and combine the herb right there just to make two green ones and the flashbang grenade and the boards. So anyways. So got to hustle. If you can finish the RPD in less than 25 minutes, you're you're in good shape. You're in good shape. So there's that same zombie that I thought Leon killed in scenario A, but I guess he's still there for Claire. And that's, and that's kind of one of the things I found a little disappointing about this game is that there there wasn't a clear it wasn't clear that Leon had been in the station before you, and because you end up having to face a lot of the same threats that you face as Leon in scenario A. And that's one thing I wish they did better here. I felt that in the original Resident Evil 2, that concept of zapping was very well done. I think it added so much replay value to the game, but it it overall this this is a great game. I still love it. I still like playing it. Even though I'm a Johnny come lately to all this, I, I didn't buy the game until it went on sale back in last December before the actual pandemic started. <laughs> well, but I guess some studies have said that the pandemic was before was here before we even knew it. But anyways, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about this video. So anyways, combination to Leon's desk is NEDMRG. And if you're just picking up this game and you're watching this, and you're trying to figure out figure out where the actual nameplate is for the name of the officer that you get to figure out. It's actually sitting on the bottom where this zombie is. It's actually on the floor where the zombie is. And you actually got to shine your light. It's upside down, so you have to actually zero in just to kind of focus on it. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and kill that zombie because we are going to run through this area again. Just like my last scenario, I do usually clear out this west area of the RPD because we do fly through here, you know, after we come back from the parking garage. And we don't want to be, we don't want to have to deal with zombies and liquors and misdirect all at the same time. So anyways, we're going to grab our grenade launcher. I use it a little more liberally here than I did in my first scenario because I need to take those zombies down and I don't want to keep wasting you. the only 45 caliber bullets that I have. Like, you can't make, and that's another thing about this, I don't know why they did that, is that you can't make more rounds like you do in Scenario A for the weapon you get in Scenario B, which kind of really did not make sense to me, but maybe it was the way to add to the challenge, I guess, whatever. We'll just deal with it. So this zombie is actually going to crash through the window right away, and I'm just, I just don't even want to mess with this guy. I'm just going to hit him with a flame round. And as the damage ticks on him, he's going to go ahead and die, fall to the ground, and then he's done. So there's the death animation, and there he goes. 
So I'm going to pick up the herb and the other board. And I'm just going to go ahead and board this up. I never actually tested to see if if you do not board this open window up, if more zombies come through at a later time. But I don't want to since I'm really not interested. So just use the board, whatever. Okay. So I'm going to try and deal with this zombie too. And she's actually on my behind. And I'm missing her. And see, this is the part where I don't like about the weapon is that it takes forever to reload. I mean, I guess I could have hit her with a flame round, but I want to save that for another zombie. <laughs> but anyways, I'm like being terrible here. And I'm wasting way too much time on this gal. And see there, I finally got smart there and went for a body shot since her head kept bobbing and weaving. Okay, so now that she finally goes down, I'm going to hit her again just to make sure she's down. And she's not. So I'm going to hit her again, hit her again. Okay, finally, I think that's it. Normally I would have a knife, combat knife on me to swipe at her just to make sure she's down. But since inventory space on the second run is so limited, I didn't carry the knife on me. And I'm just foregoing it for now. Okay, so now we're in the dark room and we're just going to loot everything here. Yeah, yeah, I don't need the ink ribbons, okay. There's a red herb in the dark room. And we're going to go ahead and bank everything here. Okay, so after I looted everything in the room, we're going to bank everything. And I use the speed loader and combine it with the SLS so we can actually speed load later when we start using the SLS again. So the only thing you need to carry with you for this portion is your weapon, your ammo, and that valve right there. Because we're going to go ahead and go to the second floor bathroom and use the valve right now to get it out of our inventory. And one of the things I figured out from watching other people play is that you bastard. when you get to the star's office, the only thing that actually you, trigger, actually you triggers Mr. X to start stalking you is a couple things. One is if you go further down the hallway past the star's office, that will trigger Mr. X. If you pick up the detonator battery, that will trigger Mr. X. So... Thanks to some other gamers that I've watched, I figured out that you don't have to get, you don't, you can just leave the battery there and just go ahead and loot the star's office. And then just bank everything. Okay, so the combination is CAP, you see that on the whiteboard as you as you pass through the operations room in that little storage room. There's the hole that someone we know made. And we're just going to go ahead and loot everything from the star's office right now. And the reason why I do that is because when I actually come back to this area later, I don't have to actually find room in my inventory for everything that's in here. So in a way it works out better, I think, is if you just loot everything now and then you're going to go back down to the storage room and just bank everything in the box. And there's the... the uh, letter from Leon that he leaves you and red herb okay so since I didn't pick up the detonator battery and I didn't go further down the hallway Mr. X is not going to trigger so we're safe for now so we don't have to actually have him chasing us the whole time <laughs> Okay, so we just banked everything there, and again, we're just taking our weapon and our ammo, because we're going to pick up a lot of items, plus a couple key items, on our way back to the main hallway. So there's a zombie right here. I'm going to go ahead and grab the bullets right here. And I'm going to see if I can just kind of stun him or maybe get a lucky crit. 
and I'm totally missing there, being terrible. Okay, so he's going to go down. We're just going to go past him. And the combination here is Delta, Charlie, Mike. Pick up the SMG ammo. I do use the SMG a lot during the second run, or I still use it. Probably the same amount as I would in the normal run, or the first scenario. And since Clara doesn't really need as many boards as if you, I was playing Leon, she's going to go ahead and leave those there. We're going to go ahead and pop this zombie now, so we don't have to deal with him later. I think he actually aggroes differently, but I never tried it. So anyways, we're going to go through here, get to the library, and we're going to loot everything down here in the library. And remember from the first run, there's only one real zombie you actually have to deal with here, and that's the female one. The female zombie is the only one that's actually patrolling around like that. So if you just take care of her, you're pretty good. As long as you don't actually attack the other zombie that's having a manwich, or get close to that other zombie slumped in the corner by passing by the desk or passing through that area, that guy's not going to get up. So you're good. Okay, unicorn statue combination is kids, scales, and then that thing looks like a little worm. So I just call it a little worm. Not a big worm, but a little worm. Okay, so we're going to prep these bookcases here for our eventual return to this area. Grab the ammo there. For a minute there, I thought that zombie actually got up, but he's occupied, so we're not going to worry about him. He only aggroes if you attack him or if you fall through that second floor area on the library. And I'm just going to take a couple swipes at her just to make sure she's down. Good thing I did. And then we're going to get the book on the table because we are getting the SMG. Going to open this door. You're going to go down here to the end of the hallway or end of the catwalk for you military types. And we're going to get those ammos, the bullets. And we're going to go to the lion statue and get that medallion. So code is here is crown, flame, and bird. Crown, flame, bird. There you go. Great, so we got two of the medallions. Just need one more. We're getting through this pretty fast. And Marvin has a friend over there. So we're going to go ahead and unlock this door now. So this is a scenario I did not want to get into where I had to deal with two zombies, but that's okay. Zombie Marvin is probably mostly dead, so he goes down. And then we just need to take care of this person. Because when we're running from Mr. X, we don't need to avoid these people too. Claire's not as uh, good as Jill where she actually has a dodge. So anyways, we're going to get these two items out of our inventory. And having that, not having that item box in the lobby really, I think it really hurts or it makes things difficult. So we're going to get those two items out of our inventory. We're going to come back through here. Just gonna run through here. We're just gonna go back to the dark room, and we're gonna get the batteries. We're gonna think we're gonna go up and get the batteries. So we're gonna grab the detonator and get the last item we need to get down to the uh, secret area of the RPD. I usually pick up a lot of the gunpowder for some reason, because Claire doesn't really need it at all. For Leon, you can keep picking up the gunpowder because you can combine that with the high grade to make shotgun rounds. But for Claire, you probably could just leave it there wherever it's standing because she doesn't use it at all. I mean, she gets all her her uh, rounds for the grenade launcher using the white gunpowder. And the flame rounds, you can't make the flame rounds, so probably don't even need to pick up the gunpowder. So anyways, once we grab the battery for the detonator, we're just going to exit and we're just going to start booking it to the third floor. Mr. X is on your tail, so you just want to make sure you stay ahead of, as, ahead of him as much as you can. 
And this zombie decided to get back up, but that's okay. We're just going to stun him there and walk right by him. And you can hear the Mr. X theme music kind of creeping up on us, plus you hear his footsteps, so that'll make your behind pucker a little bit, but that's okay. We are we are well ahead of him, but we got to do this fast. So we're going to put the detonator on the C4 block, and we're going to run outside through the door just to make sure the bookcase doesn't fall down. That should give us enough time to grab the medallion and avoid Mr. X. So... Okay, so that bookcase did not fall. You saw me check there. And we're going to grab the Maiden Medallion. So the combo is Ram Harp Bird. Alright, so we hear Mr. X in the room. We hear him. Okay, there he is. He's going to wait for him to pop up around the corner, see which way he's coming, and then we're just gonna run out of here. Good thing that bud case wasn't blocking our way, otherwise we'd be, we'd be kinda screwed. <laughs> this run would be over. So we are well ahead of him, just as long as you keep running you'll stay ahead of him, he'll lose you. Exit through the door, and then... Okay, so she decided to get back up, but we're just gonna stun her and just get out of the her, get out of the way. Place the last medallion, and that is the first part of the RPD. Next stop, G1 Birkin, and I think we did it in probably about 24 minutes. I think I said the max, which you actually want to do it in, is probably 25. But knife strap for Birkin, we're going to take the combat knife, a regular knife, and just, just a six shooter. And a flash grenade. Okay, I will see you in my next video. Thanks.